I just set this up because I just want to talk to people. And mm-hmm. I thought, what better way to start this mm-hmm. than with you? Yeah. Because you flirted with death, yep. you know, in, in the last year. And you nearly died. And I, I don't want to like sugarcoat anything. I just want this to be like a honest, open conversation where you can talk about that experience. Yep. Because I know, I, I, you remember we texted in July and... Well, read, read for all the people who probably want to read. I, I'll be honest with you, man. I was in a bad state. So I don't... This is probably going to bring up some fucking emotion because... Um, it, was on, a, it was a hard time. In July 5th. Fuck, man, I'm already fucking nearly fucking breaking down. Anyway. In July 5th, yep. after this happened, mm-hmm. I said, texted you, we will sit down one day in the future and you will tell your story honestly and openly about everything. People will watch it and there will be someone out there who wants to end it all like you did, but they won't do it because they saw you could climb out of the cave and that will give them enough hope and courage to do it themselves. You need to go through this not just to save yourself, but save the person in the cave who doesn't know how to get out yet. I do remember that. And that is exactly why I think doing this is really important. It is important. So we can talk about, you can talk about this. Yeah, it is. It's just, um, it was just, um, I can't, if, if someone's listening, if anyone's listening to this, I'm sure there'll be people listening. And, um, so what happened? Um, July 5th, take us back to that Okay, day. well, before we start, let's just, um, are we going to tell me the, the title of the show first? Talking Chimps. Talking chimps. Talking chimps, man. Which, uh, you know, chimpanzees, human beings share about 90% of the quite, same DNA. Quite like, yes. Correct. Yes, right? Well, I just think we're talking chimps, man. <laughs> we are this close to being primitive chimpanzees. Correct. I right? Yeah. I just think we're all a bunch of talking chimps on a, on a floating marble, hurling through space. We all got one life, and we don't know what happens after it. We're just a bunch of talking chimps. Well, welcome to Talking Chimps, everyone. <laughs> but this is on my personal channel. This, so, you know, it's under my name. You know, Alexander Sandalis. So, um, Talking Chimps is just the podcast name. Man, you can realize how ha- how many goddamn podcasts there are out there. All the names are taken. Everything's taken. Not Ask Woodford. Well, Ask Woodford's taken. If it's your own name, it's different. But, like, that was... Yeah, that's how many po- how many names do you go through before you get Talking Chimps? A few. Probably, like, half a dozen. Because I think a name is important, but it's not important at the same time. That's the content. Yeah, it is. And that, So, speaking of, right? Okay, Let's so... Let's back it up. Um, first of all, I remember you said to me that message was really good because you talk about someone in the cave and I feel like that, um, what I was going through, a lot of people do go through in business. Um, this is going to be, this is the first time I've talked about anything, what happened. So kind of what, what people saw on episode 49 was the accumulation of three years of absolute fucking hell. And am I through it? Yeah, I'm through the hardest part, which is fantastic because the hardest part nearly had me. Um, when I started Woodford at 25, I never ever thought, man, fuck, when I started, bro, I literally started as a dream. It was like, fuck, didn't know business, had no back end experience. Man, fuck, I thought I'd get maybe, in all honesty, man, when I started, I thought, hey, I'd be happy to make. 500 a week. No shit. I thought like maybe I'll build up. Within three months, I could have had a gym. Or I'd say six. Let's say six conservatively. Six months could have had a facility. This was me at 25 who said, came back from America, thought, fuck, I want to be the Joe DeFranco of Australia. I want to develop the private sector. I want to create more awareness around jobs for us. I want to create more awareness for the exercise science graduate. I want to... Um, create more awareness for the athlete to understand what physical preparation, how important it is. Within six months, I had all these people talking about me. I had everyone talk, you know, that no one was doing it. Everyone said there wasn't a career in it. Exercise science is a dead end career. But I said, no, fuck that. I'm going to give this a crack. I'm really passionate. And at that stage, Facebook wasn't charging for, um, uh, like, you could go viral. Like, all these big names, like, perfect example, I remember that at the time was like an Ashy Bynes, or like a fucking um, uh, uh, fuck. What's her name in America? Uh, America um, Hathaway, Paige Hathaway. They all got big. People don't understand this. They all got big before Facebook started charging people. They got in the right time, as did I. I got in the f- first six months, no payment. You could become huge. Free reach was massive, and I was lucky to have Tom who um, helped me at the start. And he helped me set up these structures in terms of the, the back end of it on the social media side. But I had to give the content. 
it was all my content in terms of online education. What I would do was at the state at the time, I saw no one was doing videos or doing video right up to the non-string sport athlete. I would see the string sport athlete, so they'd see like lifting a big one RM squat dead bench. But then I thought, hold on, how many people play sport in Australia? A lot, amateur, junior, semi-pro. No one was putting out videos for them and giving it scientific justification and an anecdotal application to it. So they could, they could take something like Joe DeFranco. I saw Joe DeFranco doing it. I said, fuck, I can do this. And then I started it and all of a sudden, fucking, I was flooded. Like, man, fuck, I could lose. Fuck, I could tell you some good stories. I could lose five, three athletes and I'd pick up eight the next day. Because you got to remember, back in those days, there was two places you could train. A CrossFit, which was CrossFit, that for strength sport athlete, or a commercial gym. I was working out of a boot camps Australia joint and I was paying rent of $150 a week. Man, it was all my clients, like all my athletes. We were flooded, man. And those were the days I was doing two-hour sessions. Strength first, conditioning second, or speed first, strength second. Two-hour sessions. I would work, man, should have seen my board, bro. I'd work in the morning. I'd start at 9 a.m., work till 9 p.m. Not, no breaks. Monday to Saturday. Have Sunday off, do it again Monday. They were the days of grinding, man. But I loved it because I was coaching. And I knew if I was the first to do that, Keep talking. Yeah, yeah, I knew it would it, it would explode. And um, it just kind of got, it, it, it exploded in such a way that I probably didn't know how to handle it at the stage. Like, I was like, oh, 25. People say, oh, you know, inst- people say, oh, um, it's quick success is good success. I, I disagree completely. I disagree completely. Because if you're not ready for that success and you're not ready for the, the monetary value that comes with it, I'm not saying I was making stupid money like half the like people in the afl at 18 but fuck you gotta realize what people don't understand about this career I, I was making no money for so long and then all of a sudden i made money it's like oh fuck i'm doing something i love i'm making good money i was still living at home alex like you know like yourself trying to save money and then all of a sudden it's like well i have so much disposable income now you know what the fuck do i do and then people are talking about you because you're the only one doing it i'm active on social media i'm coming after it i'm in your face People are like, who the fuck is this kid? Passionate, loud, fucking straight to the point, saying how it is, swearing, but passion swearing. I believe in it. When I say something, I believe in it. I'm not just going to say it for the sake of it. I'll say it. How, so. did you, how do you think that quick, rapid ascension and success and money and, and even notoriety yep. contributed to your fractured psychological state in the future? A, a lot, very much. Man, fuck, I think about it now, I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for all that shit, people coming after me. Like, I had fucking grown-ass men, grown-ass men who were insecure of me, paying me out of social... Shoot, you, listen, if you guys want to go back and go click on the Woodford page, go to 2012, 2013, 2014, read the comments I copped. Man, the abuse I copped, all this, because I was out there. And you're like 25, 26. Still young, man. I still don't know who I am, man. So that, that now I think about it, man. That didn't help my um, psych, my psyche, man. Like, I took all this punishment, but nothing affect. Listen, I, at the time, I didn't think it affected me. But now thinking about it, it probably did because I still didn't know who I was. But I was young. But I used this saying all the time, short-term pain, long-term gain. I had to be the Superman or the Batman, like I told Joe DeFranco, because I felt like no one was doing it. There was too many pussies who do nothing. And they weren't saying anything. And for me, the, the, the final straw for me was CrossFit coming out. And this all started... Listen, if you're a CrossFit guy, you know me now. I don't give a flying fuck what you do. Don't give a fuck. CrossFit's a sport. The reason why I got annoyed at CrossFit was CrossFit started coming out because CrossFit was huge and said, we did athletic development. And I got annoyed because no one was sticking up for the guys who went to uni, did undergrad, and realised that CrossFit is a system for strength sport athletes. If you're just doing wads, that's not going to make you better at sport. Understand the number one thing is your skill. Everything else is secondary. And um, I came after them, and I knew that I'd create, create content. I'm not dumb. I wasn't dumb. I was smart with my social media, and Tom loved it because he used to always say, you're the perfect person for this because you're the perfect face for it because, A, you're controversial, and, B, you just don't give a fuck because I'm passionate about what I do. Man, I busted my ass. I did seven years free work experience. I went to – look, everyone knows my background. VIS, Oakley Charge, um, uh, Football Federation Victoria, um, Maryland University. Oak, um, fuck, uh, where else did I go? Uh, Gridiron Australia, Gridiron Victoria. I did this all for free, and then these motherfuckers are coming out and saying, oh, fuck, come Ross. Mate, it's a two-day course, and most of them just had Cert 3 and 4. Hey, if you got Cert 3 and 4, no, no disrespect because Alex takes our Cert 3 and 4 here. But what I am saying is – Teachers. 
teachers, teachers, our cert three and four here, sorry, yes, to clarify. What I am saying is athletic development is more, you have to, <laughs> you have to immerse yourself in it. It's just, it, it doesn't just happen. You have to put some work in. And I came out, and if you guys are interested, do you have show notes? Sure. Now you do. Now I do. Now you do. But if you've got show notes, I want you to link them to pod, uh, my old, old... my. Pod- we can just tell them where to go. Okay. Go right in uh, WSSC, Christian Woodford, maybe a podcaster, if you can look it up. I don't know. But it's my second podcast where I thought on CrossFit, and it blew up in, say, in a bad way in terms of CrossFit. A lot of people were making money off CrossFit. Now, when you're the only person to go against a cult like that, oh, boy, you better be ready for it. I had death threats. I'd, and, and then... Good death threats? Yeah, 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 yeah. I had people messaging me all the time. I don't give a fuck, man. It is what it is. Like, for me, I didn't care because... I was so focused. Man, I wanted it so bad. I would take on anyone. It wouldn't matter. My steely focus. But the big thing was when I went on that TV show for that... Uh, oh, that the, the project? The project. So what happened was I got a phone call saying, hey, Wood, um, Channel 10 looking for people who want to talk against CrossFit. And they couldn't get anyone to talk against CrossFit because it's CrossFit. Who do you think stepped up? Me. 26-year-old Wood. Fucking... Fu- 27, I think. 26, 27. After that, Kind of, dude. I was on there for six seconds, and fucking, I don't know. I had so many people messaging what me. What six second clip did they take? Oh, man, we tried to find it for years. We couldn't find it. Um, it was um, uh, CrossFit gives you rhabdomyolysis, and just to let you everyone know they told Which me. Which even say, isn't correct in of itself. No, but but it does. If you look at rhabdomyolysis, and oh, it's not correct within itself. But if you it, look, anytime you overtrain badly, you can get rhabdo. But I didn't give a fuck because I didn't believe in CrossFit. CrossFit was a string sport athlete, and I thought, you know what, I'll be the guy to stand against it. Because we had a governing body that's a, a pussy, does nothing, and just sits there and takes people money. I don't give a fuck, man. I'll have a crack here. So I did. And I'm proud of who, man. I never, if you would ask me, do I regret anything? Fuck no, I regret nothing. I'm proud, man. I regret nothing because it's led me to this point, and I'm proud of what we've achieved. And um, the question that you asked, did, it, did this affect my psyche? Yeah, it did. Because now I look back on it, the amount of shit I copped, and I, was the, and I had no support, none. No one was willing to stand for me. It's funny now. The guys who hate on me, I know who you motherfuckers are. I know the people who like me. I know the motherfuckers who hated me. The ones who hated me, now a bunch of pussies, do nothing. Now they're sucking up to me. But the ones who like me, I always stick with. I remember the Man, I remember people. Ask Jay Ellis. We remember them. And um, if it, um, uh, at the time, it was, um, I didn't realize how much it affected me. But now, I look back, okay, it affected me. Now I know who I am. I'd... <laughs> Nothing really affects me now. I mean, um, bar my, my, I reckon I do get affected by shit with my family and people I do care about. Other than that, you don't know me. Like someone called, someone called me a flog last night, and I said, "This, you don't know me. You never met me." Or online. What's that? In person or online? No, online. Come on, bro. Who the fuck said anything? This is the point, right? This is the point we're making. Those people don't usually say that to your face. No. I've never had one per. Uh, oh, actually, no, that's a lie. I've had one person. That's my. They're my mates. <laughs> they're my mate. Uh, man, like fuck, man. You don't know me. I don't, I don't take it to heart. Listen, that guy called me a flog, man. Last night he goes, "Listen, you're smart, but you're a flog." It's cool. I said, "Thanks, bro. Regards, flog." <laughs> man, what can I do, man? It's what it is. Like people are gonna listen. Regards, you walk. You walk down the street. I walk down the street. Someone might go. He walks like a flog. Oh, you're not gonna take it. It's what it is. They don't know you. They don't know you know. I do not take anything to heart anymore, and I don't take. The, po- the positive comments are cool, but at the end of the day, I can't let them get to my heart either. It's like just that's their it, opinion. That's it. Do you that's know what I mean? Because if you, if you start to believe the good and the bad, then you're all messed up. Oh, then you're real fucked up. But that's society, bro. Man, I see a psych for everyone out there. I see a psychologist um, once a week. I've diagnosed mental health issues. I take um, uh, medication for so it. So can we actually talk about Because uh, he, here's one of the biggest problems that I've had yes. with people talking about you, right? Yeah. They treat you like a normal person. Yeah. That's... Why, and that's the incorrect thing. You, you have been diagnosed with... A, yeah. Is it bipolar? Like, can we just clarify that? Uh, no, nah, it's not bipolar. I have um, anxiety. I have chronic anxiety. I have... Um, uh, anxiety is a terrible thing, man. Like a fucking... Ter- have you got... You've ever had anxiety? No. I f- everyone's felt anxiety, but it's yeah. different when it's... When it's it got a- overwhelming for me. So let me... Actually, this is a good segue into when I started getting it, right? So let me tell you about... So when I started Woodford, I had no anxiety, no depression, right? I remember the exact moment I got depression and anxiety. The exact moment. I was with three interns, and I remember thinking, I'd, at, at the stage, my, my, my life, it was booming, bro. It was booming. Like, we had, I think we had four centers, and we had staff. And I remember coming in thinking to myself, oh, I don't trust him. I don't trust that. For some reason, I didn't trust a certain staff member. And I never felt that way. I never not trusted people. I don't know why I don't trust that guy. 
I feel like that guy's... Sorry. I feel like that guy's talking... I, I felt like everyone was against me. For, I don't know, man. Your brain plays these weird games. And I was talking to these three interns, and I forced myself to be there. I didn't want to be there. And all of a sudden, my hands got sweaty. My feet got sweaty. My heartbeat was... Boom, 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 boom. And I call up my mum going... Mum, something's happening to me and I don't know what it is and I don't really don't want to be here and uh, my hands are sweaty. She goes, I think you got anxiety. And then all of a sudden, I remember going home and just sleeping and not wanting to wake up. And I had to go see a doctor and the doctor diagnosed me with anxiety and depression. And um, What year was this? Oh, shit, man, you're making me think now. I, I've never had any anxiety and depression until about 2014. So my second year in business, about six, years ago. six years ago, right? And the pressure on myself and the stress and just the overall overwhelming feeling that I had that I felt like everyone was judging me and fuck, man, mentally I was like, fuck this shit. And I remember sleeping going, ah, oh, well, I just don't want to wake up here. Fuck this. And I remember mum getting me up, going to the doctor and we went to the doctor and just let everyone know, it's a chemical imba imbalance in your brain. It's passed on from generation. My grandma had it. My mother has it. My sister has it. My father's just too stupid. Probably doesn't. <laughs> he probably doesn't have it. My old man is the only one not on medication in my family. What medication are you on? Uh, fuck, Zolov, I think. Um, fuck, that's a good question, bro. No one talks about this. This is funny. This is probably the first time anyone has ever... I never hear anyone talk about this industry they only talk about the wins this is going to be a real good um podcast actually you know good on you but I, but good on me for wanting to talk about it because no one ever talks about it no one ever talks about what they're I'll, I'll openly admit what i'm on uh i'll find out and put it i'll tell people i is think that, it, is it a d something you take daily i have to man i'm telling you if i don't take this man i'm serious um i just let everyone know before we even stay this as well i tried for six months to do the food route so i was like i'm at a pharmacist who said um Let's try um, uh, food nutritional. It helped. Man, it helped. But my anxiety was so fucking bad. It, 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 okay, put it this way. I went from an eight, eight to about a six. Still, I can't live with a six, man. It was just too much. And I had to, hey. With medication, where yep. does the six get you down to? What do you go down to? One, zero. Really? Oh, I feel great. Yeah. You need it. Some people have to have it. I'm one, my mother's been on for 22 years. We, I tried. You know what? I'm proud of myself. I gave it a shot. I had magnesium. I changed my whole diet, Alex. I drank more water. I was. I went from a, a no. I went to a, a. You know what? My worst was a nine. Worst was a nine. Panic attacks nine. When was that? I had two panic attacks and it was just fucking terrible, man. I was like wanting to kill myself, man. But the worst thing. I don't wish it on my worst enemy. You feel like you're gonna die. Panic attacks. Just it's, the, the panic attacks was to do with overwhelming stress that I can't control situation at work. Generally speaking, that no, wasn't an eight. It was probably a let's say a high seven, six point five. But with the, with the food, it would get me down to a, a six to a five. Gives relief, though. Hey, if you're at a seven yep. and you go to a five, it's going to help you. Yep. The medication got me from a six, five to a fucking one, zero. Yep. Like right now, I got, I'm used to it now. Like I'm just, um, I'm a lot more tuned, tuned with who I am. I'm doing a lot more things to help my uh, general life out. I'm sleeping a lot better. Just a, I'm a lot more healthier than I was back then. Um, but I think I'm on, uh, oh, shit. So you're on two? No, I'm on one. I'm on you're this, um, and something else. Oh, I can't remember exactly what it was. Most people on it. It's an antidepressant SSRI, serotonin. You can re read up on it. SSRI, it's called, um, if you want to read up on it, SSRI. Um, it's fair. It, it, it modulates your serotonin. If you, if you can read that out to them. And Which we now know a majority of it is uh, created in the gut. In the gut. And that's another thing why I take a probiotic. I look at, um, take bone broth and... Um, yeah, so selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Correct, yes. So that um that, uh, that, that helps me so much. And um, if you actually read down the list of it, it might have the exact one that I take. That was a lot. Jesus. Sarafarm. No. Lavox. No. Pexovo. No. Paxil. Lexapro. No. Yeah, Lexapro. Lexapro. Ah, common one. Very common. Uh, there we go. Lexapro I take. Lexapro. Um, and I take that every day. Um, it's funny. When I don't take it, I get really aggressive. No, Kanye, I tell you, man, I called you the Kanye West of the fitness industry. Yeah. This is another commonality. Kanye West has been on Lexapro like throughout his career as well. 
Oh, has he? Which is which is like a not a funny thing, but like an interesting coincidence. Where I call you the Kanye West of the fitness industry, and this there's this other guy, this other amazing creative and influencer, Kanye West. Uh, he's had his battles with mental illness, uh, and he's been on a similar Lecture medication. Lecture, 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 yeah, 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 he's rapped about it before. Oh, know, really? You know, he's he's dropped that. Um, yeah, Lexa Pro. I I um oh, it was I have to stay on it now for the rest of my life. Someone goes, you know, <laughs> oh no. When's the last time yeah. you weren't taking that? Four years ago. <laughs> okay, so have you missed that? What, what happens oh, what when I you mean, miss oh, days? Oh, okay, so what happens? No, no, you can miss a day here and there. And you feel okay? Yeah, yeah, you're fine. It's when I get three days. I don't know what happened. I think what happened was I forgot. Sometimes I forget because I feel so good sometimes. And I f- it gets, you, you, your hands get tingly. You get real weird in the chest. I don't know. You feel fucking shit house. That's why I always have to go back to my doctor to get repeats. Um, you've got to stay. Um, but saying that though, I still do things to help me. Um, I take a multivitamin. I take my magnesium, my zinc. Um, everything I'm doing right now is to healthy body, healthy mind. Um, I'm still looking at other ways. Like I want to do yoga. I want to do, um, yoga is a big one because mindfulness. I want to, I'm getting the mindfulness thing now because I see a psychologist, Jackie Louder, shout out to Jackie Louder from, um, uh, fucking, um, oh, how do I forget Jack? Um, sports medicine. Um, ah, oh, shit. Can Sorry. you just check Jackie Louder? Cause I don't want to get this wrong. Just check, um, Jackie, Jackie Louder. Um, Olympic sport, no, Olympic sports medicine, um, uh, Amy Park. I want to thank, uh, Jan Earl for getting me on, uh, Shandall. Shout out to Shandall. Jan Earl for getting me to Jackie. Jackie's been fantastic. And actually, me. you went to the Philippines recently after your, uh, well, we'll talk about what, why you went there. Yep. But, and you got a bunch of names tattooed on you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What were those names? So, I never, haven't seen it yet. Yeah, so for everyone out there, I've got names. So, um, I've actually got, um, Shandall. So, I've got, uh, Jan Earl, Shandall Earl, Karina Earl, and they're the foot part, of, um, they were like, cause Jan Earl and Karina Earl both helped my, me a lot. And how they helped me was getting my mum to understand the issues that I'm having around my mental illness and how I, how I, how I deal with them. She was fantastic, man. So she deals with a lot of NRL players um, and she um, just helped my mum understand it uh, in terms of how I was acting and how I was doing things that I didn't want to do, but I was just kind of acting out. Um, because I, I just didn't... <laughs> Mental is such a shit thing, man. Like, you can't see it. Like, people look at people and go, oh, he's all right. He looks healthy. Well, no, man. It's, it's inside, man. It's just you can't help feeling. I've had pe- this is the thing. I've had people comment about you and they say, hey, look at him. He's got a successful business. He's got this nice new building. He's got a Jeep, you know, yeah. expensive cut, which you just sold, by yeah. the way. And, like, they think your lifestyle and career is on a higher level than it actually is. But that's that's social media, bro. That's but, social that's media. That's the image that is put out also by you with the car you drive, yeah. the, 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 like, the image you have with image. your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also not entirely your fault. But yeah. like, just so you know, a lot of people think you're doing a lot better than you actually are. Yeah, man, fuck, I'm in my own head, mate. Like, I, if you, people just think, don't understand that um, owning a business is very hard. It's funny you say this because Jamie Smith from Melbourne String Culture and I had a good chat about this. And we, <laughs> People live in a dream world, man. As you get older, though, and then you start owning your own business, which you might do, or you might work. For, it doesn't really matter. But, but understand, it's if you run, if you work for someone else or you own your own business, people still gonna have mental health issues. It doesn't matter, man. You could make millions of dollars. Look at James Packer, a multi billionaire. He has a lot of mental health issues as well. He went, went to a retreat. Just because you own a business and you you know you, I had a jeep and you know, I got a house, you got a mortgage. Having a mortgage is the worst thing in the world, you know. But it is what it is, man. Like um. We need more people in this industry, especially talking about this issue, because no one talks about it, Alex. They talk about the good. They don't talk about it. That's why I wanted to have this conversation with you, yeah. right? Because now we, got, we we understand. So people think, oh, what's the point of explaining all that, Christian? Well, it's good to understand like where you came from, like yeah. how this built up. Because yeah. this has been a buildup oh, of... Man. I'll Six years. Let me tell you the the breaking point. I And I wanted... I remember in my head, I had a mental note to talk about this exact moment. So... Well, fuck. Well, I was driving and I remember the pressure, the pressure, the pressure on me the last three years. It was a building. It was accumulation of three years. When was this? Uh, just before I um, uh, did that. Th- uh, we'll get to that point. Yeah. But this was just before the point. And um, I remember driving in my car and I was driving, driving. And I just remember it was just all too much. The pressure on how much money we owed. We got to a stage where we were, um, and I love, this is going to come as a surprise to everyone hearing this, but everyone in this industry talks about the wins. Oh man, I'm fucking six figure motherfucker. Hey, I'm, I'm sitting there going, oh, use this algorithm. Shut the fuck up, man. Like, shut the fuck up. Man, I've been doing this 14 fucking plus years. If it was easy as fucking an algorithm, everyone would be rich, correct? 
one percent makes I'd say two percent makes six figures in this industry. Shut the fuck up, man. So I make how much were you in debt? Uh, Three hundred fifty thousand, and uh, uh, the pressure on me was immense. This is twenty nineteen. Uh, tw- uh, 2018 as well, man. Like, this is all from Casey, those two motherfuckers who, um, I won't say the names, but fuck them. They're, like, man, there's just no, man, fucking, there's no loyalty in this game, man. And like, you, like, I respect you. That's why I decided to come on this. I said I'll come because I respect you. If you didn't respect you, wouldn't be coming on a show. But I respect you. You've only done good by me and my family. Um, they put us in a hole, man. But saying that, I take responsibility for it as well. This was, as my dad said, this is, we ain't going to run away from responsibility. But at the same time, for fuck's sake, like, man, if I say something and you know better, I'll do it. If I say to you, Alex, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you talk about this, I do, I'm going to do it. And just so I know, just so everybody knows, like uh, we, I said to Christian after this all happened that I want to sit down and have this conversation with you. Yep. And Christian agreed. Yep. Yes, I'll do it with you and only you. Yes. And he has kept his word for the last six, six months, months while yeah. I went away, he went away. And now here we are. Yeah. And so that when you're driving your car, you're about to have that breaking point. Yeah, I just thought about everything. And then there was, there, there was another part. There was, an ex, there was an AFL player who I trained who I lashed out as well beforehand. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I got all these messages of hate and, I'm, and of hate. Now, that wasn't the breaking point either. And then... That was a big contributor. That was a contributor as well because I talked to Jack about that all the time because I bent over back with that kid. I lo- Man, I love that kid. I love that kid like a brother. He had a key to my fucking gym. Him and his dad would train at my gym at night. Man, I'd do anything for that fucking kid. And man, that, that was a big... To see someone do that to another human being, that, bro- that made me feel so small. That broke me in here. I mean, that was, that was a jab. The final jab, though, the biggest jab was that fucking prick from, uh, who works for my mate who was asked, go back to Arsewood for episode 49, where that was the... the YouTube. St- YouTube, which you did, which we have all that documentation of it, where he just jabbed at me. And that... Oh, I remember. You remember that. And I think that... But that's the point. You're talking about what, you, what Christian's referring to is uh, a comment made on social media by somebody uh, that you knew. But, but no, no, I didn't know him. That's the thing. I didn't know him. He worked for my mate at, that, at, I mean. at yep. an NRL club. Yep. But the thing was, right, here's the thing. Here's the kicker at the whole thing. You know this. For you guys watching episode 49, it was fantastic. We, it's got so many views right now because I was so real. And you could see my emotion. My face was fucked. Um, Aaron Kellett, shout out to him. Shit. Aaron, this is what I'm going to talk about. Fuck, we've got so much to talk about. It's going to be fantastic, this show. But we've just got in, so strap yourself in. But this also goes back to this episode 49 where this guy... Dude, he kept liking my page six a year after he left a comment. A negative comment gave us gave me one start and wrote, "No one would take this guy seriously." This guy that was a, many years before. That was me, years before, and this guy kept following my page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's he saying? This this talks about social media insecurities, projection. This guy obviously is so insecure with himself and has so many issues with himself that he has to project to belittle me and chop me down because he sees me getting all this credit and being happy and being all this and to make himself feel better he has to belittle me you're a sad motherfucker cunt you're a sad motherfucker and if you had any fucking balls cunt you'd sorry about my language you can beat that shit no, out no, it's if you have any fucking no, balls because no that bro- and you know what now that i'm strong again and mentally strong physically strong you should you know and, and shout out to the person who i'm mates with if you had any fucking balls alex like you, you know one thing about you I've always respected. When I fucking blasted you on blast, you've always apologized, said, do you know what, fair play, and left it. And you've gone back and done better. I respect that about you. Same as Kranis. I like Chris Kranis because when, the time I put him on blast and he fucked up and he knew it, you've always said, no, nah, I fucked up. Got away, got better. Respect. Hey, that is respect because you know what? That's no ego because when I fuck up, I've gone, oh, fuck. Sorry, bro, I fucked up. As I said to fucking my mate, if he had any fucking balls, he'd apologize. He didn't. No respect. None. And for me, someone, uh, my mate said, oh, he was humming and hawing if he should apologise. He didn't. You got no balls, buddy. You're in a dickhead. And you're nearly, and, you, and, and the worst part of that is, if you, if, like Alex, if you worked with me, you can ask him. We can all make this industry better. Don't forget, uh, don't forget to tell me, read out Aaron Kellett's letter. You're going to love it, what he wrote to me. Because he's one of the reasons why I stayed. For everyone out there, Aaron Kellett reached out to me who's, He's an OG in his industry. He's in pro sport. He's worked in pro sport for years. He uh, is the head S and C coach of um, the Australian cricket team. The reason why I get so upset about this other guy is because he's working his way up in pro sport. You don't need to be insecure, mate. It's not a dick contest. I don't want your job, I, mate. For everyone out there, if you're working pro sport, I don't want your job. 
I, 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 I'm the Joe. I, I looked up to Joe Franco. I never. I don't want to work pro spot. Like I don't. I don't think they're threatened by that, man. What? I, I, th- I think it's. I think it's so many things. I think just some people just don't like you. No, 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 no. I think uh, okay, they don't like me. That's but, fine. But, but that's fine. That's fine. But I think it's a lot to do with insecurity because I get a lot of publicity, and I just think they're insecure because I get that, and they want to be that. Sure. Example is this, right? My mate went to um, an academy overseas, and he told the head guy, he told this guy who worked there, I could do what Christian does. And mate goes, well, why ain't you? It's just shit like that, man. Like, and I, man, I, for me, I'm a polarizing figure. But I, but I'm polarizing because I want to be polarizing. I can sit back and be real quiet, or I can say things that I believe in. I will never ever say something I don't believe in because I'm passionate, mate. There is no one more passionate. At, oh, Joe DeFranco's. Enough said. I love this industry more than life. And if I lost this, I probably wouldn't be here. If look, I'm lucky to be here. I'm one of the lucky ones. I might not have been here because I was willing to give it up all because I just didn't want to do it anymore because I just felt like I was fighting a losing battle because there were so many insecure fucks who either didn't know me. Hey, the minute, listen, it's always funny when someone meets me, they're like, man, fuck, you're a fucking legend. Nathan Keery is a perfect example. Met me, goes, man, you're just a nice guy who just wants the best. Listen, joke me if you want off social media, don't really give a flying fuck, but at least fucking meet me at one of my courses or meet me when I'm interstate or something and then fucking chat to me. Hey, and then if you still think I'm a flog, I'm a flog. But it's not really going to, for me, it doesn't really affect me because I know who I am. But I this I, comment did. Because I was dealing with so much mental health built at the time, up. it built up. Right. So that comment affected me. So then where do you go mentally? Where, where's the next okay, step? Okay, well, let, let me tell you. So I'm in the car. I want you to understand. I'm in the car driving. Everything just gets 350 grand in debt or two, whatever it is. We're still in debt, right? A fair bit. I'm just mentally fucked. This cunt fucked me. He fucked me. He's going to fuck me. He fucked me. I'll oh, fuck this shit. Bang. Pull over the side. Start punching the steering wheel. Punching, 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 punching. Headbutting, headbutting. I bled with my fingers. This went on for five minutes, right? Caught my mum. Mum, don't think I want to live anymore. She said, what? I don't want to live anymore. Don't want to live. I just didn't want to live. Man, the feeling I had, I, ha- I, am, a, I, am, I am resilient. I am um, passionate. I'm determined. I'm driven. I'm, I'm persistent with everything. That was it. I, man, honestly, I fucking felt that was the end of me. I thought, no, nah, I don't want to do this anymore. Fuck this shit. I didn't want to do life. You get to a point in your life where it just gets over. That was it. Punch the steel. I say, I need help here. Or either that, I'm going to neck myself. Um, I call up Kieran. Kieran comes over. Mum comes over. We sit down. It was an overwhelming feeling, feeling of, I just don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to live this life. The life which, it was just, it got way too much. Just way too much. And my lifestyle factors got on top of me. It was fucked. Man, mentally, I was fucking cooked. I didn't want to get up in the morning. It was just way too much. And the, it was the first time I'd ever given up. Well, shit. Just a terrible time in my life. Terrible time, man. I don't wish I'm my worst enemy, man. Yeah, shit. And um, mum came over, Kieran came over, and that was the stage where I saw Jackie. <sighs> yeah, I don't wish that on anyone. The final, the, the that, so they came and saw me, and my, my parents, and I think my mum knew where I was at. Kieran, the day that was the big, the worst day was what happened was, I think it was two weeks after that day, I kind of felt like, I don't know, man, like, I stopped taking my meds, and I said to myself, oh, fuck this shit, so, I stopped taking my meds, and I remember I was at my mate's house, Brad's house, and um, I said to myself, What's the easiest way I can get out of this? And I laugh now, but fuck, man. What a fucked up thought. I wasn't thinking straight, obviously. I reckon I was probably up for two to three days, and I was thinking to myself, fuck this. I gotta, I gotta, I'm got i just thinking about, what's the easiest way to remember myself? This chick came around, and she says to me, I said to her, listen, can you get me any um, Valiums? Like, how many Valiums can you get? She goes, oh, why? And I said, I just want fucking Valiums. Just don't ask me why. Get me Valiums. And I wasn't hanging around with the the most um, how do I put it the uh, most nicest people in the world. I, I, it's so funny. My I isolated myself completely. Isolated myself in the world. I started hanging around really bad people. The people you just don't want to hang out with. Let's just put it that way. Let's leave it at that. And because because I just I just did. I didn't want to hang around normal people. I'm like, well, I don't I don't deserve to hang around normal people. I don't want to really anymore. I just want to hang around these people. So you kind of hang around these people that aren't good people that will use you that extorted me. Let's, I'm not going to talk about that, but I'll leave it at that. Um, 
This now you can start to understand my mental state. Not good. And um, she goes, "Yeah, I got Valiums. Sweet, cool. Gives me them. How many? Uh, I took. It, get, get, it gets better. Just wait. Had the packet. Anyway, I said, "Well, why is this only one packet?" She goes, "Oh, because I don't know. I've lost the other one." I said, "Fuck it." Took all of them on the packet. About, I think ten. Took all of them. Turns out they weren't at uh, Valiums. Here's the kicker: they're antipsychotics. So antipsychotics relax your nervous system. They put you to sleep, right? But if you take a certain amount of them, you can be a vegetable. Because I slept for like three days afterwards. So I took 10. I go, I want more. She goes, no. Ooh. Anyway, I went around the house. They must have dropped out somewhere. I looked. I looked. I said, fuck this. Drank a whole bottle of wine. Drank another bottle of wine. There's two bottles of wine, right? Anyway, I have to go to work. This is when Cranage saw me, right? I have to go to work. So 10, 10 tablets. Man, the kick is this, right? Apparently, if I took... 20 well i was trying to take 20 she didn't tell me that any so close she told me the valiums but me and my haze i was just so fucking all over the show i just took 10 and i said where's another 10 i was oh, man my whole idea was to take as many as i can and hopefully go to sleep that was the idea because you think about it, you just got to sleep it, no, don't you? you're not going to wake up are you and i and someone goes oh well you're scared about being vegetable fuck no i don't care i'm dead i don't give a fuck if you're vegetable that t- i'd hope that pants just turn off my fucking um uh whatever it is well i'm lucky i'm just lucky that i didn't take because there were supposed to be two packets of 10 of these antipsychotics. I don't know what they were. Don't even ask me. I don't even know. But one fell out. Obviously, one fallen out in their car. Oh, man, Alex, I'm t- swearing my mouth on my mum's life and my fa- family's. I would have taken all of them. I'd be dead. Because, fuck, man, I came in here and asked Amy Melander, poor Amy, and think, I was just fucked. I couldn't, because the two bowls of wine, because the idea was for me just to take, take 20 tablets, two bowls of wine, done, be done with it and see what happens. I don't know why I even went to work. What the fuck was I doing, man? Like, I don't know why I did. I don't know why. I tried to drive. But Brad stopped me from driving. Because I go, fuck you, I'm driving. And I tried you to get two ca- bottles of wine in, too. Two bottles of wine, 10 antipsychotics. These antipsychotics were strong as fuck. When did you start feeling them? Within 20 minutes. And I was like, oh, well, but, mate, you don't think clearly when you're mentally just all over the shop. You're thinking, oh, this is great. Um, I took them... And I thought, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm going to, um, I'm going to go drive to work, mate. Don't ask me why I went. I don't know. I can't even remember what. I woke up and there was te- three, four people around me. I don't remember anything. I get to work because Brad drove me. So Brad saved my life because, mate, I'm telling you, I would kill people on the road, mate. I'm thank fuck for Brad because I don't remember it, mate. I do not remember anything. I remember waking up, Alex, four days, three days later, and then going to see Jackie in psych, and then deciding to go to rehab, and, um, uh. Fuck, it was a weird thing, man. Like, fuck, I um. To so go to work. What's the first thing? Well, man, all really I remember, remember, all I remember was walking in, and then I don't remember oh, what I was saying. Amy reckons I slur my words. She goes, "I've never seen you like that. Your eyes, everything. Like, you don't even like dress properly. You're all over the shop." And they put me upstairs, and they just let me rest, and I slept. I just apparently slept, and um, they said, "What do you take?" They were trying to figure out what I was taking, like Susie at the hospital, because they called up the ambulance and saying, "Listen." I was, uh, they made sure my head was on the side um, and they trying to figure out what they gave me because they, I thought she gave me Valiums. She gave me any psychotics and then Brad was getting upset because he's like, what the fuck are you giving him that for? And mate, I didn't give a shit, mate. At the time, Alex, I didn't care. That was it, mate. That was the first time in my life that I said, I don't want to wake up, man. The first time. And I, I can say this now, it is, uh, it, anyone feeling that and listening to that, I want you to know that you're not fucking alone, man. Like, you are not alone. Like, I say this now, I'm jovial, because I'm okay, but I am lucky. I'm one of the lucky ones. Like, fuck, what a story, man, to try, to get out of this fucking cave and to survive. This is a fucking great story. I mean, Shandell talks about the ability to get up and go again and, and, and be that, Be I can be the face of this now to help people get through these dark times, but man, you're not alone because I flipped it. You can flip it. I want you to know you're not alone because I did it. I was lucky. You don't need to do that shit because you can message me because I'll talk to you or you can talk to your family or friends or there's better better things to do than that. I just did it because I felt there was no... I honestly felt, man, I, I think you're right what you said. There was three years of accumulation and a few kicks in the guts when I didn't need it. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe... It, I, I use it like I was on the ground and I had two kicks in the guts real bad that just fucking winded me and I think that was it. I just reckon my brain said, no, nah, I'm checking out here. Honestly, I felt like I'm checking out, man. And um, my parents, man, seeing my um, seeing my um, seeing my um, 
my mum and I uh, see my mum and dad and um yeah. yeah. Yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, time of my life, man. I didn't want it, you know. I don't wish upon anyone. <laughs> you know, it was a terrible time of my life. <laughs> and people People think I'm a strong person, which I am a strong person, eh? but fuck, I'm human, man. You know, I still cop it on the chin, you know, it's still hard, man. That was a shit time of my life. And to see my mum's face, see my mum's face and and to ask to have my mum cry in front of me and say, please, promise me you're not going to do it. That was the hardest thing in my life, to see my mum's face. Man, that fucked me for months. To see her cry in front of me and my dad cry and then say, would you, don't please promise me. And I made a promise I wouldn't and then, that was a hard time. I remember, it was the evening, I don't know if you remember, Jay came, I was in the room, Sky was there, Jeremy was there. Um, Wait, this was upstairs? Yep. Right, you were in that room for a long time. I don't know how long, I, I don't know how long I was in that room. You look room. catatonic, you look like you're on a different planet and... I, would, I saw exactly what you're talking about. I saw your parents in an emotional wreck and state. And we all came together and we're all trying to be there. What do we do? We're trying to be there for you. Do you remember that? You remember all those people coming in, coming around no. you? No. Nope. Because they did. I, 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 man, at the time, I'll be honest with you, man, I just didn't, I, I wanted to check out. I just, I just, didn't want to be there. I didn't want the pressure anymore. I just didn't. I'll be honest, with you, man. I made that choice back then to to just leave. I I remember I remember saying to myself, "Fuck." Mentally, I was so taxed, man. My mental health was so fucked, and I just I was doing things just to fucking not help either. But I was just fucked, man. Like mentally, I was so fucking. I was over, man, my brain was going a thousand miles per hour. Like, there was nothing that could stop it. And the minute I decide, I'm a very strong willed person. When I decide something, that's it. I think when I decided it, I was like, nah, fuck it. The only thing that turned it around was the love from people. People supporting me. Like, oh, I had so many, you saw that. How many messages of support? And I remember, you were, you were fantastic because you were like, man, people love you. And you took Instagram off me. And you wanted my mind to fresh up. I remember, but you said, I'll pass on messages to people and you'll pass on messages and, yeah man fuck what a hard time man fuck that made me though but i'm looking back at now fuck that that just galvanized me like uh, the, the resurrection i remember shandor saying uh, saying something to me and said i'm with you here on it and saying the resurrection's gonna be so great everyone loves a comeback story because i was gone when uh, when i talk about i shut that down that was it i i remember saying i didn't want to do this anymore and i was honestly that's it because brad offered me work uh, uh, for everyone out there i'd quit we didn't sign the contract over there and we hadn't had this you know this and um uh, Brad offered me work for a thousand a week cash, but I have to work hard. I was happy to do it because I'm a hard worker. You're doing labouring. I was labouring. I'm I'm a hard worker. I pick shit up, man. I'll do it. I'm, I I was willing to do it and just take a year off doing this. Um, and this is when the future of Woodford was on was up in, up in the air. That right? was that was it. And for everyone out there, people thought I did it as a uh, uh, people the, people. The, the, the most annoying thing is I remember someone saying, oh, he did it for publicity or some bullshit. Shut the fuck up, you moron. That's just dickhead. Like, people like that just have no idea. Like, you lived it. You were there. Was Did I do it for publicity? No, see, you will do things for publicity. Yeah, of And course. then there's things that are real to you and authentic. This is real. Like, right? There's no fucking lie. And it's just people don't know. They don't, they're not close to the circle. Not they don't close, understand. Yeah. yeah. Right? But that's why this is important to give that transparency. Well, I think, mate, I haven't cried ever on a podcast. Like, fuck, I just got emotional there. Trust me. This is fucking real. This is... Emo this. If you ever want to see real, I am the realest... If you talk about real, I believe that Joe DeFranco is a real motherfucker. What you see is what you get. When we met him, he's a real... Shout out to Joe DeFranco. He's a real motherfucker. And I love you, Joe, because uh, I have Joe DeFranco on my uh, wrist right here, brother. I remember him saying to you, if there's anything I can do, please let, let me know. Him even saying that, it gave me a, a, a boost. Um, he's real. Um, there's not many people like Joe, like myself, like yourself, Alex, who are real because they want to talk wins. Oh, this is going to be the most realest show you'll ever hear in the... I honestly believe this show will become the most realist downloaded show ever. Who the fuck talks about 350k in debt? The losses. Everyone talks about popping bottles, wind. Hey, no, motherfucker. No, this is the real. 
of the fitness industry. This podcast right here, and that's why I did it. That's the real. So, at the time, you were when you decided to to take all these drugs and and try yep. and kill yourself. But yep. you, at that time as well, yep. you were hanging around some bad people. Oh fuck! And I heard some things that you were you were already taking like illicit substances around that time as well. Yep. Was how long did that go on for before that? Uh. Listen, I don't want to get into like the nuts and bolts of this, you but don't I was have to be specific. I was having issues um, around uh, my lifestyle for for years. Um, me, uh, just, just, uh, I couldn't. Uh, no, because you talk. We talk about mental health. Yeah. Why not talk about the the drug use as well? Because that's a very real thing for people as well, and that yeah. could be an addiction and a crux for people, right? I think my biggest issue was deal. I can't. I couldn't deal with my issues, man. I couldn't articulate my issues. I was. I was acting out consistently. I never ever dealt with who I. I've never ever dealt with my issues and talked about them. Do you know what I do? Push them down. Party. Be fine. That's how I thought. I thought what I'll do is, man. I, that is the worst thing you can do, man. I'm telling you, the worst thing. I built my issues up for three and a half years, not talking about it. This this guy would fuck me over. Oh, I'll just party for three days and be fine and be good. Do it again. Mate, that's not the right way of doing it, man. I talk about my issues consistently every week now, and I let them all out. Because, mate, if you do not talk about your issues, they will manifest into something far fucking worse, which uh, has happened with me. And this is the real, this is who I am, really. This is, And when you see me in, uh, on Facebook, that's real. I ain't going to fucking lie to you. I'm not going to be like half these dickheads online fucking talking about, like, oh, they don't have any issues. Trust me, 99% of people have issues. You're not the only one we're going through it. Trust me. I used to think that because I, what I did was just let you know, I'd isolate myself with these people. And um, it's not a good thing, man. It's not a fucking... These are not nice people I was hanging around. These people carried guns, carried... Man, fuck, I could tell you some fucking stories, but I'm not going to because there's no need to bring it up because it just brings up things I am past now. I am focusing on other things that are, that are the good, but... Um, whoo, man, I was hanging around some hard guns. Whoo! And that could have even been... Man, risk to I, your life as well I was hanging around people Let's put it this way I was hanging around people Who just got out of jail That's who I was hanging around Not not, 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 the, uh, not people who fucking uh, Are driven in work they, None of these guys These guys are These guys are Gangsters You know what I mean Like They're not like They're not gang, like gangsters We talk about like fucking You know the highest stuff I'm not like you know But I'm hanging around people Who are happy to how do I put it? Um, happy to roll somebody or happy to take someone's money. They're happy to do that. You know, I was hanging around people like that, but I thought that was normal. I thought, oh, well, this is just... I kind of felt, how do I put it? Like, um, knowing these people is like a badge of honor. Like, fuck them, fuck it. But I don't ha- know. But what happens then? You become the people you Correct. surround yourself with. But that's what I was becoming. I was becoming those people and I didn't see it. I was becoming a bad person, but I didn't see it. I thought I was just, I don't know, man. Uh, your brain, my brain was working differently back then. and I don't know, man. I'm, I... I had to go away to find out who I was. I've gone away twice now for three weeks at, t- at a time. So. Okay, and that's that's what I wanted to talk about. You, yeah. from the time you yeah. took all those uh, antipsychotics, yeah. yep. you're in the office yep. with your parents. Yep. At what moment from that point yep. did you come to the decision to go into rehab? So what happened was, just to let everyone know, um, they put me. They didn't want me to go in Victoria. They wanted me to go to Sydney. So I went to um, a place in Sydney. Now, the, I, I don't, the place in Sydney where I went to is where a lot... And I can't name these people because I signed a stat deck and everything. So by law, I'm not going to name these people. But, uh, rehab with uh, AFL players, NRL players, <laughs> the whole lot. So, yeah, it's interesting. Actors. But how far from the point of that night in July? Straight away. Within a week. I went. Is that your? Was that your decision? Was it your parents' decision? Um, no, I had to go. I had to go. It was my parents, mine, and my psychologist's um, decision to go. And then, so when you arrived, yep. What were your thoughts coming before you arrived? Like, what are you thinking? Freaking out, thinking that I don't know if I um, should go here. Like, what am I doing here? I don't know. Best time of my life. Taught me a lot about who I am as an individual. I met the coolest people there. Man, we had such a good bond with people. It's so cool, man. You meet the coolest people. Like You meet people who don't judge you. People who... Um, uh, at the, but everyone's got a story, bro. Everyone's got a story, man. And it's so funny. Everyone has the same underlying issue. They don't deal with their issues properly. They, they own a business. Man, dude, there was a CEO in there. There's fucking... But, a wide range of people, man. Not just, you know, there was people who, high achievers, people who were alcoholics since I was 13 years old. But, you know, it was just wide range of people. People who, people who, bad, bad mental health for years, like bipolar. People, listen, all I'm going to say it was an awesome time because it made me realize 
that I'm not the only one. I'm not alone. But people have issues, man. Everyone has issues both. But how you deal with your issues and talk about your issues. This is why I'm doing this. For everyone out there, I'm doing this to, to say, hey, I'm putting my hand up. I have mental health issues. I've got a lot of issues, but I'm dealing with it. I'm willing to talk, to talk to you about it to say it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to have mental health issues. And I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks because I'm happy to put my hand up. And it takes balls to do, but I don't give a fuck. I have big balls. So fuck it. If it help, hey, if it helps one person, you said if it helps one person get out of the right, cave, that's, right. that's cool, man. That's cool. I saved it. So fuck it. I'm happy. So we went to... Um, we went to um, a rehab and went up there and had three weeks. Actually, I left early. Just to let you know, I left early. And um, <laughs> but the, before we go, in, well, why'd you leave early? Oh, uh, I got poor. Because <laughs> I'm a, a guy who like man, I no phone. The fucker, no phone. I got phone at night. And How long were you in there for? Two and a half weeks. I missed like a, like another five, four days or something. I think three days. But so f- what was the? What were you supposed to be in there for? Three weeks. Okay, so you left early, but in that two and a half weeks. Yeah. What did you do there? What was your time there? Uh, I can't. I really don't. All I'm going to say is I um, in, in, intense cognitive behavioral therapy yep. to do with my my mindset. My every son, day? Every day. Dude, would have classes every day. Would go in there. Um, uh, I was talking. Um, so, obviously, nurses... Um, no, dude, I go in there, man. I'm not allowed razor blades because they're worried we're going to you know, start cutting yourself. And... Um, to go in there was fantastic because it made me realise that life is meant to be lived. Like, I do have a good life. My life's not that bad, but I had to have that that circuit breaker. I needed a circuit breaker because if I didn't have that, man, it was the I really needed it. And um, we had really intense behavioural therapy. I think twice, I'll say, I think I think two hours a day we'd have class every day. Saturday, Sundays we had off. Like a group? Group, this group, but then you had individual time as well and I'd talk to my... I'd had my own psych, a psych, a psychiatrist. So I had this doctor, man. This doctor was incredible. Um, so she was a psychiatrist, not a psychologist. So she hands out meds and stuff. And I'd just talk to her every day. So every day she'd come in and want to talk to me. And she's fantastic. And um, I just talk. She goes, what? She goes, I don't know what you're doing here. And I said, funny you say that. Because people say, that when, when I went in there, everyone was like, what are you doing here? Because you know you got this business and all this shit. And I said, well, I'm going to lose this business if I don't get my mind right. And I remember day, I remember it took me about, the first five days was crazy, bro, because I... Why? Because, Alex, I have... Woodford's going to be going eight years in September four, September 12th this year. Eight years. I never, ever took one day off in seven years. When I say one day off, mentally, I was always gone. That's the thing. Mentally, you never took a day off. Correct. Right? Never. Physically, you distance yourself. Or Correct, whatever. but mentally, I never, ever let myself ever go, oh, shit, I got... What about that? What about that? No, never. And this is important. That's a thing. It's an important point I make here. When you recharge and have time off, everything, phones, computers, lap, you I need time off now. I need time for myself just as much I need time for the business. And that was my biggest kicker. And they couldn't believe it. Because my, psycho, uh, psycho, uh, my psychologist who was there, my psychologist there, not my psychologist, uh, uh, Jackie, um, I... Um, when she was there, she goes, do you realize that you never, ever, you never, ever give yourself any credit for what you've done? I said, what do you mean? She goes, uh, uh, you, she explained it like this. If you had a million dollars, she goes, would you be happy? I said, yeah, I'll be happy. She goes, what happens I told you the next day you wouldn't be happy you try and get two million? She goes, you're always searching for something that you might, that you might, uh, you're always searching for the next, next thing, the next high, the next happiness. I'm never happy. I never smell the roses. And I go, holy shit, you're right. She goes, what was your dream when you started Woodford to get a gym? She goes, do you have it? Yeah, Alex, I never gave myself... Hap- I, when I got that gym, do you know what I said to myself? Ah, oh, fuck this. After a month. Where you are now is once where you're wishing to be. Correct, yes. Right? It's crazy, it though. It happens to everybody. Everybody, but I was never happy with that. And that's an issue because my mindset was like, you're never good enough. You've got to go for more, 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 more. It's not. That's not right, man. That's not good for your mental health, bro, because you're always searching for something that might never come. You know, you might get it, but then you're not happy. It's like the grass always green on the other side. No, it's not. I don't know. I think it's like, can we balance? It's like the pursuit of excellence. Correct. Yes. But also, how do we balance that with a with a healthy psyche and understanding that? Look, you may work really fucking hard, yep. but you may not actually get the thing. Correct. But that's okay. Because that's okay. It's going to the thing that matters. It's that process. It's a process. Which is the cliche. Exactly. But that's okay if you don't if you don't reach it. But my thing about that is, as long as you give yourself enough time off mentally to recharge your batteries. And not be like me for seven years. Put all this pressure on yourself. 
financial, emotional, psychological, relationships. All my relationships have been affected. I had a beautiful ex-fiance, Kate, who I fucked up with completely because I cheated on her. I've cheated on every girlfriend I've had. That's an issue within my own self. Why? Exactly. But I have to ask my... Because I'm not ready for love. Because I'm not even happy with my own self. Because I worked that out when I was in re um, rehab. I'm like, holy fucking shit. I'm searching for something more. Business. Females. Because I'm always searching. Mm -hmm. And then I finally, ding, ding, ding. Now, I'm fair. Oh, man, I'm... I, and just to update everyone, I'm feeling fantastic. So let's, let's give a good vibe to this. Because I know it's been a bit dark. No, 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 no. Fuck the dark. I, I don't like when people say that. No, this is... Real, this is real, real. This real. is what happened. Real, real. There is no, no, no dark light or good no, or bad. No, no. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I want everyone to know right now. I'm in a fucking great place. Right. I just want everyone to know because we're going to get to this point. But um, um, even with women, man, like I'm asking girls on dates now. I'm feeling great again, man. Going out again. Well, I saw myself like my mate goes, "Oh, you want to go for a drink? Hell yeah! Went for one wine, went home, went to sleep." Great, I can do that. Moderation instead of fucking going on a bender. It's a moderation. How did you get to that point? Because, Alex, I am a guy of extremes. I literally, it's either all or none for me. That's in my life, in my, for my women, but when I party, whatever, it's extreme. It's either all or none. I have to be a moderation guy now because I have to look after myself. I have to have my, my mental, my physical, my emotional. It's all interlinked. I've been, my sleep has been fantastic. My training's been fantastic. I'm back to 90 kilos. I'm lifting heavy again. I'm feeling great. But it took me a long time to get to that point because I had to learn to love my... I had to learn... I had to learn it's okay to not be further advanced than what you want in your mind. It's okay to... Uh, I'm very driven. It's okay to be at this point in your life and just be happy. Do you know what I'm saying? But still want to do better. But smell the roses. Hey, fucking look at this, man. We're the old podcast. Let's... Take it all in. Don't rush it. Take it all in, man. I'm 34 this year and I've rushed everything because I wanted to be there. Stop be Todd Jarrett. Toddy Jarrett's a perfect example of someone who rushed everything and his health suffered. And now he's taking it all in again. And I'm really enjoying to to I'm really enjoying his his transformation. He was like me. Even oh, we're probably just as bad as each other. Todd's very driven. Wants that there. Wants to do that there. His health deteriorated where he nearly died as well. Yep. So he'd be a great guest. Yep. But I took a lot, you know, Toddy and I, you know, he, he's always going to be a kid that I've, well, I like. But like you have to have this death, near death, to, to have that rebirth. To have the rebirth. Right? Correct. Yes. Correct. Correct. So you come out of rehab and you come out early. You have your, what, is there like a takeaway that you have from that rehab? Yeah, I think time? that um, just, just to learn about, um, Everyone has their own issues. You're not the only one with issues. And understand you're not alone in this fight. There are people that do want to help. Don't isolate yourself. Pe everyone isolates themselves, Alex. Everyone will isolate themselves. People worry about what other people think. Stop worrying what other people think, trust me, because they're more concerned about how they, th what they've gone through. There. But people think that. Trust me, when you get to, uh, if there's one thing I could tell my younger self is, no one gives a fuck. Seriously, they don't. They've got, they're more concerned what's going on in their life, motherfucker. Don't, don't worry what other people think. That's one thing I'm proud of, man. I'm proud of myself because I did this, man. I wasn't fucking weak-minded. I wasn't scared. I said, fuck this. I'm going after what I want. Fuck you if you... You know, and I put out content daily. You know, I don't really give a fuck. Everyone goes, how do you put out content daily? You know, your, your knowledge in saying, you know, who gives a fuck what everyone thinks? It works for my clients, athletes. Who gives a fuck? It's, it's subjective. Yeah, I use science, but it's, it's a bit of an art as well. But I get results. Who gives a fuck? Put it out. Content, don't be afraid because... The biggest poison is regret. Gary V, I love you. If you're listening, I don't know if you're listening, but Gary V, you're a legend. I, I, I take so much away from Gary V. Poison. Regret is the biggest poison. And, and he looks into those, he, he said this one. Looking into a 90 year old's eyes and looking at regret, regret and regret. What and do you regret? Nothing. Zero. Nothing. Because I, 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 at 25 years old, I did this. And I knew that would be hard, but I've taken the hard route and I'm going to pay the dividends now. Do you regret some of the relationships? Uh, yeah, the types I, of relationships yeah, yeah. The only thing I regret is um, probably uh, my females in my life. The, the women in my yeah. life. I think I regret... Um, Just the way you handled it? Yeah, the way I handled it, Kate, with Kate and engagement. I should be married to her right now. I'm not. Do I still... I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And I yeah. thought that's what my my family wanted and I shouldn't have done that but I did that that's the only thing but anyway it is what it is that's life I've um, got a date on the weekend I'm not going to say who because you know her so there we go mm. 
There we go. Interesting. Interesting. You trained her, so there we go. Uh, <laughs> ah, yes, that one. Yeah, that one. Um, that one. So you come out of rehab, yes. and then what's what is your ne- next thought process once you come? Well, out of I'll be honest with you. I got out and I was good for a bit, and then I just went back to my same ways. That's I- right. So you had that dip back down, Correct. almost like a relapse. Yeah, it was a relapse. Yeah, it was a relapse. Um, but here's the kicker to the whole thing. Um. Well, I had to come back. You got to remember, when I came out, I had to decide about this place. So let's go, let's wait. And there's someone who I need to thank before we even begin. So just wait. Are you going to get your phone? I need to read this out. So you're going to put this up on your screen. No, you'll read it out. I'm going to read it out. Okay, so. This is the person that messaged you during this hard time? Yes. Um, there was two people that really made me really want to come back. The first one I'm not going to show because I don't want to, because okay. it was a private one. But all I'm going to say is this. I had a message from a 14-year-old who said to me, um, I want to thank you for everything you've done, and I one day I want to be the next Christian Woodford. Now, I broke down and cried. The reason why I cried that is because I remember when I was 16, 17, I think 18, I started reading Joe DeFranco's, and I say to myself, I want to be the next Joe DeFranco. Why would I give up when I have, I've done so much good and I've helped so many people? The amount of message you saw it, you could tell everyone, how many messages I get of support? A lot. So that was the first part. So that 14-year-old, I, I want to thank him, but this is the one that... This really got my heartstrings pulling. Just like everyone, Aaron Callett has been in pro sport 20 years. He reached out to me. He didn't have to reach out. He did. And it, it made me cry to the extent where I just kept crying and crying. And I'm like, you know what, Wood? Step up. Get out of that cave. That's, put that on the t-shirt. Um, <laughs> Here we are, Aaron Callett. But when was this? Was this before rehab, after rehab? Uh, I think dur- oh, I can't or during. I can't remember. during. I was getting distracted. No, I'm trying to fi- find it. Before, during, or after? Um, so you can't multitask. I can't. I'm not very Some good. Some people say you actually the brain doesn't actually multitask, but it task switch. It task switches. Oh. Oh. And that's another thing. Like this social media, this thing, this phone. Like how do we use it as a tool for us instead of against us? Because I think that contributed massively. Oh, uh, let me call up Kieran and we'll get it. And put call her up. Screen. Call her up for what? Just wait to get... Um, to get what? To get the Aaron Kellett's email because she sent she it's a, it's a look through emails. No, because I don't have the info. She took it off me. So to get my stress off, here's another thing, right? What we did was we uh, Kieran's been such a fan. I I was his PA, his personal system. Uh, but, but I'd be remiss and not operations. I, I'd re, be remiss not to talk about Kieran how important she is. Um, you just look through your emails and feel. Yeah, fine. she's been fantastic because Kieran um, came in and she. Uh, I've had so many people promise me everything and done nothing. Now. I owe you a gratitude because you helped me set up the media. You gave me, you, you helped me start Ask Woodford, which has been a big show for me. Ask Woodford, you set up the Woodford shop. You did a lot, a lot of good. So, you know, I have a lot of gratitude for you. Um, Karen, a lot of, been one of my, my best chick friend, has been so good for me because she, she does, man, she's a goer. Very organized, very structured, fantastic what she does. What she's done has taken a lot of load off me. Man, the stress that she's taking on my hands, because she likes it. One thing I want to talk to your listeners is this. If you're starting a business, the best thing you can do is get the right people in positions. Um, and what I mean by that is, I didn't have a business background. I got no back-end experience. Um, I don't understand it. So get the right people like you, media guy, media guru. Um, uh, I'm not a guru. But you know what I mean? Media guy, back-end, a uh, website. That was your area. You wanted. You saw your in for Woodford. You said, I can offer you a skill set like Gary Vee says. You did. I hired you. That's how you got in the back door. You're driven like that. I like that. You gave me a skill set. Why not? Shout out to another young kid. Messaged me, 18 years old. Said he's got a skill set in um, video editing. Did what you did. You never know. Good on him. What I'm saying is, um, look for people who, who, ha- have, who can complement your team. Hey, fill your weaknesses. Fill your weaknesses up. And weakness is not a bad thing because I'm the front man. I'm the I'm the coach. But you need a back end manager. Kieran, my PA. You got Alex, the media. Now Alex is a coach, senior coach here. I was coach first. Coach, get, coach first. Get that shit right. Get that shit right. Um, Bryce, he's doing my media, taking over Dust Woodford, doing a fantastic job. Love him, great kid. Um, so we're doing good things. I need to get this email. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, Aaron messaged me. So just to let everyone know, I decided to. Stay in Woodford for a number of reasons. Uh, there's two reasons I'm going to keep private. Uh, don't, don't touch her. Don't, don't touch her. Sorry, sorry. I'm not going to touch it. Um, you can put it down too. Sorry. Two reasons I'm going to keep private family matters. Um, uh, the uh, One of them is just because I just want to fucking 
really give it to the people who didn't think I could do it. That's how I've always been, just shove it right up them. If someone says do something, I'll do the opposite. That's how I am. Um, but Aaron Kellett's email really hit my heartstrings and this 14 year old and also all the staff who have been here all the all this fantastic stuff i've enjoyed having at woodford over the last seven years i just like fuck man we've had some great athletes i don't want to give this up i really do love it i just got to get my mind ready so i came back and we opened this one um but then i think after two weeks i it was just the same stress and nothing changed two weeks i was good but nothing changed Anyway, Nothing changed with what? With you? Mental, with how you deal? My, with how I deal with, my with stress. issues? With stress? Nothing changed. But here's the kicker. So what happened was, um, Brad was going through a divorce. My mate Brad and um, the guy who saw helped me out when I was in trouble. And um, we went past this flight center, and he looked at me and goes, "I reckon we need a holiday." And he hadn't had a holiday for ten years. And um, I was like, "Fuck, man! I don't have any more fucking holidays. My fucking dad can give me." And we made the decision to go to the Philippines for three weeks. And it turns out to be the best three weeks of my life because Why? because going to the Philippines made me change completely because of the people. Because the people there were so nice and it I saw it just made me change my mindset into a how I view poverty and how lucky I am as an individual to live on this earth and how I am how lucky I am to live in Australia because it's such a great country, it's not a third world country. And all these beggars and how they can't live day to day. And I was like, you know what? My life is not that fucking hard. So I spent three weeks there training my ass off, eating right. And boy, I was on the paddock. I ate every day so much. That's why I'm intermittent fasting now to get the weight down. Um, I was eating like a king. Man, I'd eat five meals a day. Fuck, man. I was eating a shitload. That's a lot of food for not a lot of training. Correct, man. I was eating, man. I'd get up in the morning, bro, and I had pank. It's pancake. cheap too. So cheap. So Are you in a hotel? Yeah, fuck yeah. Five-star hotel. Um, which Brad paid for had Thank the, you Brad Had those buffets Oh man those buffets Oh yeah um, I had Dude I had pancakes p- Eggs Bacon Man I just You know what That was the That was the first you're time You're a pig when you eat too People yeah. don't know that You're a goddamn pig The first time ever in my life In the last se- eight, Seven years since I started Woodford Didn't think of Woodford Didn't really think of it Didn't think of any of it No just Shut off Just enjoyed my time Lived in the moment And I enjoyed it Because I just ate Didn't worry about my weight I was like fuck it Just eat Who cares I ate Drunk, slept, fucking reset my body clock. Did I love it? Came back, and here I am. And came back with a mindset to win. And man, have I come back. And you can see, here it is, 31st, the 12th, the 19th, 4.45, just to prove to Alex. Hold on. His new tattoo. No, but this is just to fucking say that's when my life changed again. Reincarnation, 31st, the 12th, 19th, 4.45 a.m. That's New Year's Eve. That was New Year's Eve when my life changed. Why? Because I made a pact to myself, I wasn't going to go through this again. I wasn't going to live in my head again. I couldn't do this for another three years. It's, it's either this, survive or conquer. And I was sick of surviving and I'm going to fucking conquer again. And I changed and I got out of that cave. So you talk about that cave, that was the day I got out of my cave. And I said, I'm sick of running away from these issues. I'm going to face them head on. I'm going to come back and be Christian Woodford again. I'm not going to be a shell of the person I was. I'm not going to survive anymore, guys. I'm going to conquer. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to conquer every every part of my life. Sleep, nutrition, hydration, training, business, relationships. I was going to conquer. I wasn't going to survive. I was going to conquer. And I made that mindset. I'm going to take everything that happens in my life is because of me, my accountability. I take full accountability for my life. I'm not running for it. Everything that occurs is because of me and no one else. I'm going to grab that motherfucker and run with it. And and people can either join me or not. Fuck, it is what it is. But I'm going to survive. I'm going to conquer, not survive. And I'm going to do it myself. And I'm going to take accountability for my life. I'm going to help people. I'm going to give without expecting anything in return. I'm going to be a happy person. I'm going to help other people live their life. And, and make their lives better and I'm going to hang around better people and look what happened you are the you are the f- average of five people you hang around guess what I'm feeling happy again and this is uh, if any if you guys can take anything out of this long winded podcast which I hope you enjoy it because fuck it's, it's real it's, it's, it's honest and it's fucking raw and yeah it's fucking hard to hear but you need to hear it but if you can take anything out of this is lo- these, these dark clouds don't last forever if you can if you can ride the wave and get the help you need and get the support, the structures. You can get, I got out of it, you can too. You can too, you can too. And you can turn this on its head. But but it comes down to one thing, one thing, it, support, but one big thing, Alex, mindset. Mindset is so fucking big. Because I remember when I was when I started off, my mindset was kill or be killed. It was fucking conquer. It was survival conquer. It was conquer every time. And it was accountability. It wasn't blame. Do not blame anyone. And I started becoming a blame game thing. Blame him. But at the same time, 
Kieran. Kieran. Oh, uh, you're on the podcast. Uh, you're on the Chimp Talking Chimps podcast right now. Oh, hey everyone. What was I talking about? Um. Oh, mindset and accountability. Taking accountability for everything that goes on in your life. You need to take accountability for. It was my mindset. My mindset was negative. When I was hanging around these people, put your phone back. It was. All, well, I needed. Oh, it. Fuck. sorry. I like that. I like it. Um. You're so staunch. What are you talking about on the new... Oh, shit, son. Shit, son. Damn. Um, I'm looking at a photo of myself on the new Woodford SSC Instagram. They did a... Uh, uh, it's actually going on the website, you idiot, but anyway. This is the Instagram, bro. It's going on the website as well. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Don't play games out here. Um, just quickly, uh, before I read this email, I just want to quickly say um, accountability, but also mindset. When you hang around dregs, negative people, and people who use other people, what do you think you're going to become? Them. The minute I... It's actually funny. You got me. It was you and my, my psychologist. I raised all my negative people in my life. All the people were dregs. All the people dragged me down. I raised all the apps that were dragging me down. Guess what happened? Positivity. My mindset is so positive. It's go, man. I feel fantastic. So mindset. You have to change your mindset. Take yourself out of the, that. To, to really get out of that dark cloud, you really got to... You've got to take yourself away from those those elements. Put yourself in a positive positive situation where everyone's upbeat. You can do anything. Mindset, man. Mindset's a big part of it, man. And I'm proud to say that mindset is back to the old... Who's that? I'm kidding. I was just joking. I was still because you realised... Yes. On that day, on, on New Year's Eve, you had to make a decision. Yep. It was either it was either that or I'd kill myself again. Are you pulling up the email? Yes, I am, sir. You got it right there? I should have it once she sends it. Just checking. I have to check. All right, that's fine. Chuck it down. It'll come through when it comes through. Yes, sir. See, this is the thing. This is why I can't fuck around with phones when you do things like this because they're so distracting. Oh, mate. Especially with you. No, just... Let's open up. Check your screen time. Can we look through your screen time? Yes. Oh, do you know how to check it? Good afternoon, Christian. See, you just this pops up just constantly. Sorry, pops what do up. I go screen time? Figure out, figure out your screen time. See how many times you look at your phone. I bet... Five hours, 50 minutes. Put it down. Let's see it. Jesus. Daily average is six hours and 23 minutes. What's oh yours? God. Not that. Definitely not that. Is that a lot? Mate, my whole business is run off that phone. Big it, daddy. It's, it's true. It's true. But it's, think about if you're in bed for eight hours, you're uh, in bed, right? Uh, so what is that? 16. Okay. Half, half, half the time I'm on that. <laughs> Six to, you have 30, th- more, than thir- more than a third of your day is yeah. spent with this device in your hand looking at it. Yes, sir. Goddamn. Goddamn. Damn. That's a lot, man. Is it? Hey, d- what do you think about that, man? I post, I read, I, I do it all. Yeah, you don't have a laptop or computer. I hate, do, you I hate have, do you have to play with the mic like it's a gut, like it's a something, something? Sorry, bro. Up 24% from last week. Hell yeah, baby. That's how we want it. You spend the most used time is on Instagram. I bet scrolling through all those booties and titties. Well, it's just funny because it came up here. Check this out, right? So, um, the first thing I look at is this blonde chick. And it's just like... Oh my God. I don't know. You could just scroll Christian Woodford's The People He Follows, Coach Woodford on Instagram, <laughs> and you're just going to see just a barrage of titties. Just titties and ass. And I'm like, how do you get work done? I can't. Oh, Borzillo, here we are. Like, it's just... <laughs> he gets work done. He's a, he's That's a, a man who gets work done because he ain't distracted by all the titties. Do you know, I'll tell you something about Borzillo. One thing about... Uh, here's another reason Jeremy why... Jeremy Borzillo, shout out. Shout out. He'll, he'll listen to this. 100% listen to it. He's a king. Ah, sweet brick. Um, listen, he doesn't know this, but one of the main reasons I came back was guys like Brick. Because Brick showed me the good in people. He showed me that you can trust people again. You can trust students. They do work hard like yourself. You can trust them. And he, he, he did a lot for me. So, came because if I left, what would he have done? Seriously. He'd been a fair bit of trouble. If he left, what would you do? Exactly. I look at it both ways. But what I am saying is, let's say Woodford shut down, right? I look at it that way as well. I want him... I think you have facilitated and Jeremy's built enough... Clout. Direction in his life as well. Clout. And where he's confident clout. Just use the word clout. <laughs> I love the word clout. That he would go to like a, a strength power no, no, gym, could, like strength. He culture. could now. He could now because I built him up now. Maybe to be two confident. years ago, I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, but you know what? I'm proud of the kid. I I'm always proud of Jeremy. And there's another young fella coming through, who will take over from me. So um, probably in the next two years. Put the mic closer. Another young fella take over from me for the next two years. His name's Christopher Tukranis. Yeah, and that, this is so interesting because if there's one guy who I think 
can who started so young, young learning young, about this, 15. which is really impressive, right? Fifteen years old, yeah. Um, and number two is if you just keep running with that, yeah. Oh my goodness. Why do you think I sent him to college to do what I did? Because it's gonna galvanize and make him better. He still has a long way to go. Very raw still. But let's just call it out. If he stays on the path, yes. he stays true to his direction yes. and doesn't get too I don't know, doesn't like the ego take over too much. Chris, you need ego. You need ego on this. And Chris has a um Listen, Chris will have... <laughs> you need it. Because you don't have an ego. You walk around with your chest out. You're not going to believe in yourself. He does. Um, the reason why I want him to take over is because I want I want to focus on... This is going to sound very weird because I don't have a family. But, but a bit more family with my parents, my sister. But also, when I do have a girl and a family... And do you actually kid, think you have a family? Yes, I do. But don't uh, you need a woman for that? Alex, I could get any woman I want right now. But yeah, but you can get any woman. But can, can you... Can you keep them? Can you keep them and can you get them to have your child? I don't really want to say this on... Uh, 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 fuck. I've had a fair few abortions, or I haven't, that women have, that I could have kept them, but it's like, I don't want to bring a kid into a world that I don't... Yeah, I want a loving family, you know? So, And you want to, you want to do it maybe with some purpose. Like, purpose, purpose, Like, yeah. you didn't intend... Man, to I'll tell you, when I have a kid, man, what purpose in my life? My Man, my purpose... <laughs> Just, I just can't wait to have a kid, man. I don't know, man. So it's really selfish. You just want a kid just to make yourself feel better. No, no, not that. No, no. I think having a kid is the most beautiful thing in the world because you're bringing out like a, a walking, talking version of you and he's got... Ah, yes. That doesn't confirm exactly what I just said. Oh, really? Didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Um, but I don't know. My, I think I'm doing it because... No, no, I'm doing it because I think make it... Come on, man. Bring in an eating, pooping, shitting, pissing version of it. Like you. You know, a you, young version of you. You, know, you have to guide them. You have to guide them in life. I think that's fair. I think that's cool. I think that's awesome to have another one. Do I want a lot of kids? Fuck no. No. I don't want a lot of kids. If they're, if they're like me, one's enough. But if I have twins, triplets, what is what is, you can't, you can't shove a few back and go, I don't want them. <laughs> you know, you're just going to go with it. And I think G would, G would, uh, G would <laughs> dad ask me every week, when are you having kids? When well, are my grandkids? They're about, they're in their 70s. Correct. Right? Yep. Yep. I don't want, I, and you, you say, people say, when do you want kids? I don't fucking know. If one pops out of a girl I like, we'll keep them. It is what it is. I don't know. You can't, hey, one thing I've learned in life, another thing I've learned in, in my mental health, just go with it, Woody. Sometimes you just go with things. Don't, don't over, um, over analyze it. Don't um, try and control every situation. If it's good, smell the roses, baby, go with it. That's another thing. Because you know what anxiety is? Feeling that you can't control a situation. And do you know how much better I feel? A lot better. By the way, you know what I do now? I do a gratitude journal every day. Do you really? Uh, yeah, man. I'm gratitude for fucking having a house over my head. A roof over my head, I can eat. I seriously am. There is, obviously, there's a lot of anecdotal empirical evidence that that's really effective, right, yeah. for mental health. But now there's also, like, Correct. literature behind it and how yeah. it improves the well-being and mood of people dramatically. Yes. And so, when did you decide to do that? Uh, last week. Okay. And then I'm going to add in, I was going to talk to you about yoga, getting you to teach well, me see, We've talked about this many times, right? Correct. So, yes. I'm not here to talk about shit. So let me know when you want to do some Let's shit. Let's do it then, motherfucker. Right? Let's do it. Right? Like, I'm being serious. I want to do yoga once a week with you, though, because you do it gay, and I want to see you. <laughs> that's, that's totally gay. No, but I want to do it. Or, or, or I might do... You don't do... The thing is, I want you to do... I don't know why you don't do Bikram yoga. Let's do Bikram yoga, bro. I know oh, your you sister wanna, does you it. You do hot yoga? Yeah. Uh, it's fine. It's great. <laughs> I don't do it. Why, bro? Well, you mean me teach it? Yeah. Because I know, man, I've heard... Infra I heard Bikram yoga is fantastic, man. Well, like it mimics, they think it mimics some of the benefits of sauna as well. How many chicks so go there, by the way? Bro, it's majority. Yeah. That's why you probably does should. Jasmine, does Jazz do it? You know she does it. She does? Does Where does she do that? You don't have to ask her. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to Jazz. Just so let everyone know, I actually like Jazz better than Alex sometimes. That's my sister he's talking about. Um, uh, you know what? Actually, I'll tell you something about it. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Jazz, for your sister. When I was going through a fair bit of shit, she actually messaged me. You know, she's got a, as much as Jazz carries on, she's got a good heart. She messaged me. And um, I, I feel like she kind of goes through similar things that I go through with the mental health and stuff like that and how she overthinks things. And she was really, you know, when I was going through it, I remember the hard times. She was good. And I appreciate that because it shows that she's got a good heart. Anyone who reaches out to you during your hard times, always remember that. That's another thing. Always remember that because... It's not the people there for you during the good times, the people there for you who, who were there for you yeah, during the bad. They're your true friends. That's my opinion. Everyone have a different opinion. That's my opinion because I always remember people there for me during the hard times. So, Do you worry that... Because it's kind of just a matter of time. So I have to go on to see if you... Callan, Aaron Callan. Come on. Me. Keep going. Keep going. 
it's just a matter of time before more pain, suffering, and trauma happens, right? But I, but I know how to manage it better now, big boy. And what are your, what's your plan and protocol for like when your parents get sick? Like you got to, th- we got to think about that. And people don't think about these things, right? But like it's gonna happen. Nope, they don't. Right, but it's gonna happen. Correct. Everybody you know and care and love is gonna die or get and get sick. Well, you're gonna die, and so am I. Right. We all die. So. We all die. That is a trigger for a lot of people to send them down a spiral. Sorry, woodfordshop.com. For the fuck's sake. Forty nine ninety five. Let's see what this arm um, this guy bought. Let's have a look. Could you see? See, this is a perfect example of a phone addiction. Correct. Someone who was so interconnected with their phone. But apparently that's what they wanted. They're it's like a part of their body. So this guy, Bernard Brangingham. Thank you very much, sir. You bought a triple pack for 49 dollars Where's he from? Put the phone back. Oh, no, I'm going to. He's from... Oh, United States. Damn. It's a great place. <laughs> America. 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 I love America. Okay. I okay, put it back. Sent it. All right. Now, keep going. I can't put it back. I need this thing. Because we're going to end it on this. And I keep going. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, this has been a very... It's just a matter of time before another significant uh, event talking, happens. You're talking, you're talking about another event that could happen. Right? And so, no, Not could. Sh- will happen. So what... Yeah. What happens when that happens? Because that could send someone down a spiral. Correct, man. But, that, but that's for everyone, though. Correct. That's for everyone. Um, listen, um, I can I deal with it because I'm talking about my... I see a psychologist once a week. I talk about my Still issues. Still now? Yeah. I see... Uh, at every time I see Shando and in his car going... <laughs> you can't understand what he's saying. Sure. It's like, man, a little about your words, better, you idiot. Um, but uh, are you going to get him on the show? I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, he's a good man. I'd love to. Um... Uh, he um, he is a good man. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking about him before, um, but yeah, I, th- I I have a better team around me. I've got a team of people now that I can. That when you when you isolate yourself, you think you have no one. Honestly, everyone does it. You isolate yourself because that's what I did. I isolate myself. Now I know I'm not alone. Where before I kind of felt well, no one cares about me. I honestly, felt no one cares about me. Oh, it's just, it, I think that's a story you told yourself. No, of course it was, man. But that come on, man. I was going man, mentally. I was fucking shot. So. Yeah, I just um, I ha- I'm a lot better, and I- I'm more in tune with who I am. You no, know? you know, you've got to be in tune with who you are. And the people who are insecure, a lot of people who project their insecurities on other people, or say or that, or or um, being negative to you, they're the most insecure. They're the ones who um, hate themselves. It's fucked, man. People who go online to belittle someone and do it on. Uh, and, one thing about me is when I do my ne- when I do my post calling out people, I'll tag people and do it on my own post. I never ever go on someone else's post and belittle them. I don't need to do that. I'll do it on my own post. There's no need to do that. But people who belittle other people on their own post, I always be like, well, if you have a justification, it's, it's an open conversation, fair enough. But if it's just a negative, you're a cockhead. You really can't get much out of that. They're the ones who are insecure. They're the ones who project. They're the ones who insecure other people's success. Can you imagine though what it would be like for someone with? 10 times, 100 times your influence and fame. Like artists, influencers, musicians, um, movie directors, a- actors, actresses. Yeah, but... Um, like that would be a crazy thing to see. Yeah, I don't, I've never thought about it, man. I've never actually thought about that. Yeah, it'd be hard. So I think what you're, you're experiencing is very real, but it's also like a, a somewhat micro version of what Com- could be. Because it's only a matter of time before you grow and get bigger, yeah, bigger right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you just attract more craziness more, more to More craziness. You. Yeah, it's true. Um, it's true. Well, I'm going to happen now. Fuck yeah, man. I'm going to happen now. Fuck. I don't want to happen when I'm fucking 41. I'm going to happen now. And um, yeah, it's the rebuild now. It's the rebuild of so the business. So what, what does that mean? Like, how is your health? How are you? Fantastic. Um, best off out in years. I feel fantastic. 90 kilos, intermittent fasting. I haven't eaten today. So um, what's the time now? So it's 4.11. Don't think I'll eat all day. I'll go 24 hour fast. I go 24 hour fast once a week now. Good. I love doing it. It's good fun. We all know the autophagy benefits. <laughs> the autophagy benefits. Um, yeah, I love it, man. I trained yesterday. Just had a bit of branch training. Didn't eat first. And, well, no, I just feel great. I feel my body feels great. Um, leading up already, I've lost about two kilos. And um, I'm, oh, fuck, but I'm going to go get a bod pod. So I've been looking to get a bod pod. So I can know exactly how much fat mass I, I lost. Are you going to buy one for the gym? A bod pod. Yeah, I know they're expensive. No. No, we'll just go out and just use one. But anyway, I've just got... Man, I need to get this email. This is doing my head in. Yeah, well, clearly she's not sending it to you, so that's okay. Well, it's not okay. Oh, yes, I like that. It's okay. See, I'm trying to control the situation. Is it up? No, but um, I'll get a bod pod and um, 
Bone pool is important because it checks fat mass, bone density. I don't know if you've ever done it before. I do DEXs. Well, DEX is the gold standard apparently, but I don't give a shit. It is what it is. Use a bod pod DEXA. As long as the other one you're doing afterwards is the, the same one, you're fine. Right. Um, so, yeah, I... Um, do you have a... Pro- do you, like, what does your training regime look like now? Because honestly, I rarely see you train. Well, because are you here 24-7, are you? I'm here a lot. I was, and when people say that, people don't understand. My mates have gyms. I train everywhere. I, I mean, like, as I was... When, as I had the issues... I train twice. I still train, but twice a week. Maintenance. Maintenance. Now, four or five times a week. Been training heaps. I've got a structured plan for uh, two lower, two upper, one conditioning, day off. Sometimes I train twice. So, if, example, if I'm in a high carbohydrate week where what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put... It depends what I'm trying to do. Like, example, if you want to lose weight, you need a calorie deficit. If you want to put on weight, you need a calorie surplus, right? Plain and simple. What people don't understand is to train, you need carbohydrate. But saying that though, if you're intermittent fasting, I still reckon why you can get away with having branch chains if you're intermittent fasting to minimize muscle protein breakdown. Um, yes, they are trained, but not too too strenuously. Like it was more light, more technique work. Um, but I still had um, branch chains when I lifted. Um, but if I was to do two lifts a day, I'd do one in the AM, strengthen the AM, more volume in the PM. If I am, if I feel good. I listen to my body. If I feel like shit, Drop, drop, uh, drop the um, the 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 load. Drop the volume. It feel good. Ramp it up. What are you trying to? Are you trying to lean down to a certain weight, or just see how you go depending on how it feels? Uh, right now, man, I'm just trying to get in. The stru- um, you know, honestly, I'm just trying to get into the structure of things in yeah. terms of in terms of um, um, consistency. Exactly, and then get into because it's it's all about for me. Um, it's creating habits. Absolutely. Everything's about creating habits and yeah. consistency of training, and that's all it is, man. And and wake, wake, going to sleep at the same time, wake up at the same time. We know for a fact that people who are successful are consistent. They wake up at the same time. They tra- They they go to bed at the same time. They have they have habits. I'm a I'm a man of habits. I know. No, when wait, I- hold on, hold on. That's been your downfall. Is that your habits have been all over the place? Bad habits. Right. I want good habits. Right. Correct. Constructive habits. Constructive not habits. Self-destructive. Not self-destructing habits. Correct. Right. So, um, my habits have been good. Fantastic. It's been waking up, going to bed. Um, I intermittent fast for autophagy benefits. Um, autophagy benefits. Um, but you're going well. I don't know. I just, I feel, you know what's funny? You feel more energy. It's weird though. People get told, if you don't eat, you've got no energy. But man, fuck. That, see, energy. that's the, that's the, Propaganda consensus. Correct, that's mate. Been shoved yeah. down our throats for years. Because why do you think that you need to eat breakfast? Why? Why? Why have they done that? Why? We, well, why? Obviously, why? money, baby. Money, baby. Money. money. I'm trying to get. If this smell. <laughs> don't yell into the mic. Jesus if this Christ. This smell. Yeah, put it down. Put it down. You're fucking crazy. Shut your mouth. Um, it's crazy because all these like cereal companies tell no, you need to have. You, you, know, you need to have wheat. Breakfast and, is the most important meal of the day. Right. Suck my balls, breakfast. I don't. I, I haven't had breakfast in three weeks. And I feel fine. You won't die. You'll be okay. Will I? You have muscle, liver, stores of glycogen. Oh, you You'll be okay. Fat, baby. You right. are fat. What do you think the caveman did? Do you think the caveman would go, oh, right, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I'll get Kellogg's. No, motherfucker. They're, hey, that's propaganda. I could go, listen, this is not a propaganda video, but you understand what I'm saying. I do understand what you're saying. Um, but now you're at a point. Actually, no. I want to ask you about the Philippines. How was the Philippines? Because oh, you said that changed your perspective. Man. We haven't talked about the Philippines. Fuck I want to know how it was. Insane. I had so much fun there, man. I forgot about work. I forgot about all my issues, and I just enjoyed the moment, and I loved it. It was so much fun. Relaxed, trained, slept, ate, drunk, uh, by the pool, lounging out. Fucking the, the uh, Filipino people want to marry me. Women are going, oh, he's hey, poggy, poggy. Poggy means hot. Good looking. I know, girls. Um, poggy, you're poggy. I said, yeah, they all got photos with me. Talk about poggy. I put on a fair bit of weight there. But saying that though, man, fucking you got losing a bit, it. You got a bit pudgy. Pudgy. But you know what? Didn't give a fuck. Porgy, poggy For, got a bit pudgy. For once in life, I did not give two fucks. I didn't. Didn't care. Do you think you need to do that yearly now? Yes. Yes. Or like, is there like but hey, but not. It doesn't have to be Philippines. It can be no, like. You know what I mean? Just, just stepping. Jesus, step. Oh, don't drop the mic, mate. Just don't <laughs> drop the mic. Um, stepping uh, away from it. Yep. I'll go. Tw- I reckon twice a year. I'll go to. Um, uh, listen, personally, I want to live in the Gold Coast. I just think the women there, the lifestyle is fucking sick, man. I don't know. I just. Lotti's up there, isn't he? he? No, no, he's not Gold Coast. He's it's something. He's where all the old people live. Sunshine Coast. Oh, that's right. Shout out to Potsy, who was the worst guest I ever on Ask Woodford. <laughs> Couldn't even talk. Man, if you go back to his videos, they're the most horrendous videos. 
Hey, bro, put your phone down. I have to get this email, bro, mate. checking your phone won't make the email come quicker. Well, 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 Will. How? Well, because it will come through. You get a notification when it comes through. No, I don't. I don't. Why? I you, don't. You get message notifications. No, I don't. That's one of the biggest mistakes I think people make is they keep all their notifications on their screen. You need, I think you should disable almost all of them. What about autophagy? But <laughs> I'll ask Kieran one more time because I say, listen, do you have it? Do you have it? Wink. And Why don't you just talk about what was said? Oh, mate, it's not doing it justice, mate. I'm being serious. It will not do it justice. Let's talk about the autophagy benefits. Um, no, Philippines is great. Honestly, fantastic. Lounge around. Got a lot of tats done. Shoot load of tats so done. You got, which ones? You got? I saw your names. You got the... Name. I got, man, I got the man in the arena quote. I got fucking... Um, you really went hard in that man in the arena quote. You got that whole thing tatted on. Because I believe it. Yeah. Because if I believe something... I'm going to get it. I believe in it. I, honestly, and we're getting it done downstairs because I am really? the man in the arena. I, I know that. And I'm every day I'm fighting Valentine and I'm going to lose. I'm going to have losses, but I'm going to have wins. But it is what it is. And people who want to fucking pot chop me, that's fine. I don't care. It is what it is. I'm the man in the arena. And then Shandor didn't even know. This is funny how the world works. Shandor didn't know about Aaron messaged me about the man in the arena. And then Shandor, if you look at Shandor's jumper, he has, Woody, you are the man in the arena. Keep going. He wrote it. Man, and Mike Ball shared it as well. People who, people who go and do things, and people who just cri- criticize other people for doing it, they're pathetic. I just, I don't respect. I don't respect people who open up a business, have a dip, have a crack, coaching, have a crack. You're the man in the arena. That's how I see it, anyway. What's What's next then for this next year and the future? What's next? Becoming the guy I always knew I was become, becoming the man I always knew I'd become, becoming the business I always knew I'd become, becoming the 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 the, the, the boyfriend I always knew I'd become to the, my girlfriend, becoming the 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 son to my family that I uh, my and the brother to my sister that I always knew I'd become. That's the person I become. That's who. What does that person look like? Who is that person? Passionate, driven, committed, respected, uh, caring. Life isn't always about money. Yeah, you need money to live, but it didn't make me happy. But what? it did cause significant stress when you didn't have correct, it. Correct, correct. It did. She wrote back. But it did cause significant stress. Uh, no, I'm not looking for that. But anyway, fuck, she fucked up. I think... Um, but what it did was, what it showed me... She's an idiot. She, she sent me Aaron Kellett's email. Oh, for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. What Kieran's done, she's blocked all the apps. So, dude, you're going to love this, right? There's an app block you can get through. This is so funny. Wait, but why can't... Doesn't that mean you can unblock them yourself? No, I can't because she got the password. It's oh. so funny, bro. It says, what is your child's name? <laughs> she wrote Christian. So <laughs> dumb. Anyway, she's blocked apps that I might go back to my previous That's ways. That's good. What, which apps? All the dating <laughs> Bro, knowing you, you'll probably find another one. No, 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 no. I don't want it, man. It spent so Which much time. dating apps? Tinder. Yep, classic. Bumble. Blender. What's Blender? You don't, don't want to know it. Just Blender. don't. Uh, grinder. Yeah, you grinder, man. Um, anyway, so she blocked those apps and um, it we, says, what is your child's name? And she wrote Christian. Ah, I can't do that you. So she blocked them. So I got no apps. I can't even download any apps anymore. Well, you do have apps. I can't download any more apps. Look for my app store. I don't have it anymore. You can't download more apps. I can't download any apps unless she gives me the permission. With I like pro- that, man. That this is, you got to create fail safes for yourself. Correct. No, no, you do. You do. Measures to protect Man, it's so life. funny. Even like, even if I wanted to go back to my previous ways and my mental health. It's harder. Fuck, it's fucking harder. So do you want to do Ah, oh, fuck this. I can't be bothered. <laughs> right. So I don't. So fail. Exactly what you said. I like that. So, um. Fail safe. So, um, you can put the mic down again. My check, my check. You can put the mic I got down. the hot new record. I'm sorry to the people listening. I have to hear constant highs and lows of Christian's I got voice. The, I got the mic check, mic check, mic check. He's not a very subtle guy. Um, so here it is. She's just send it through. So this email you've been trying to get for the last <laughs> 45 minutes. Yes. <laughs> now, this obviously meant a lot to you. Here it is. This means a fu- this meant a lot to me. This kind of helped you get out the cave. It, it helped me get out the cave and realize that there's more to life. So you ready for this? I'm ready. Now, for everyone out there, I think you we... You can put the mic down. Mic check, mic check. <laughs> um, so, I printed this out. I'm going to get this printed out, and I'm going to put this up in my office. So, this is from Aaron Cutt, who is the head strength and conditioning coach of Cricket Australia and the, cri- in the uh, Cricket Australia. He reached out to me and wrote this to me. Mate, I started riding this on the team bus from Southampton on the way to Birmingham to finish the last of our preparations for the first Ashes test. Having just watched episode 49 of Ask Woodford and finally sending it this morning from breakfast at our team hotel. 
I don't expect you to get this for a few weeks. As you indicated, you'll be without a phone for some time, but wanted to reach out to you anyhow, as I hope my message will be of value to you, even if it is read in weeks or months to come. Firstly, please know I value your work, but more importantly, I value you. I've only known you briefly and in limited context, but it's clear to me that you are a bloody good man. Thank you. I care for you, your happiness and your health, and you will always have me as a friend to call on should you ever need to. But I know you will have people who are closer to you, who know you better, and will have more expertise than I to care for you, love and support you through this chapter of your life. And it was a hard chapter in my life. But like you, I'm a coach, and I can't avoid using the opportunity when I see that my knowledge, experience, and skills might help someone to get better. So it is as a fellow coach that I reach out to you as much as I do a caring friend and supporter. I've attached my favorite quote, an expert excerpt from a speech by Theodore Roosevelt in 1910, which has become quite central to the way I live my life in many ways. It's become known as that, the man in the arena. And I'll say up front that Bernie Brown talks to this far more articulately articulately and with a level of insight much deeper than I ever could. So if you ever read, seen some of her work, please seek her material out. Just so very clear on the analogy, you, you are the man in the arena. And he says you in capitals. And right now you are marred with dust and sweat and blood and you will need time to heal and rebuild, mate. As you have clear experience, these are, there are plenty of critics who choose to take their unresolved fears and insecurities out on us. Those who will attempt to use our, 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 our errors, shortcomings and failures for their own personal gain. Or those who simply criticise to deflect attention away from, those, from the reality that they are sitting in the cheap seats of life. I couldn't explain this better than he has. Now, whilst I believe we must have compassion for the critics, which I do, I feel sorry for them, we can never listen to, to or take feedback from them. This is difficult. We are conditioned to seek belonging and external validation for our, of our worth. It will likely require ongoing effort. At least that is the case for me even now. But I believe that it's only others who are, who are living in their life in the arena that we should allow ourselves to ever take feedback from, for people who are actually inside the arena with us. Now, take a word of caution. It's very li limiting to have our own evolution create echo chambers. So people just pump you up. Yes, man. Yes, man. Which, trust me, my mother will never let me have that. Don't worry. It's fine. I don't have it. Where we create an environment around us that is filled with people who mirror our own views of the world. So must be vil vig vigilant, which I agree with. But if you're living life in the arena, you must find a method to filter out the white noise. <sighs> But if you're living, so if you, so as you let people in your world again, assess them closely. Do they strive valiantly? Do they know great enthusiasts and devotions? Do they spend themselves in a cause worthy of them, themselves, which is important? Whilst it, it will be attractive if they have known great triumph, more importantly, have they also failed whilst daring greatly? You need people to fail. This is why I talk about failing for everyone out there. This is why people just talk about the wins. And they say they only ever won in life. That's bullshit. I've lost more times than I've won, but that's the reason why I win. That's why. That's the reason why I'm going to continue to win. That's the reason why I'm going to continue to become best, the, be the best I can become. It's because I failed more times than I've won. But that's the reason why I've won. So for now, take the time to... Exp uh, whose feedback we can take on and whose criticism we should reflect on. So for now, take this time to experience the chapter of your life story, mate. This is the chapter. This is the, this is the cave. This is the time I'm going to look back and I came out of the cave and I fucking rose. And as Shanda Earl said, everyone likes a comeback story. And in the next five months, you guys are going to watch the reincarnation of Woodford. You are going to watch the business side, the, the, the person of Christian Woodford become better and become that man who I thought I'd always become. I thought, I hope that whatever you endeavor, endeavor Endeavour you choose to take on in the future, you continue to do so from down here in the arena, mate. If you do, just be prepared that you will f fall short again and again. That in actually doing the deeds and striving valiantly, that you will most likely fail over and over. But please appreciate that you can never know true joy, fulfilment and love sitting in those cold and timid souls in the spectators of life, the cheap seats. With love, Aaron Kellett. I want to read out the man in the arena and I'm going to leave this on this. 
This means so much to me that I have it tattooed on my body. I have it, I'm going to have it downstairs and I have it all over my fucking wall at home. I am the man in the arena. You are the man in the arena. If you're watching this, I hope you guys are the man in the arena. And I'm going to leave it on this and I hope you don't take cheap seats and take cheap pot shots. Because you will fail. You will. I will. You will. But it's not how you fail that will define you. But how you get up and go again that defines you you, me, not just in our careers, but in everyday life. And that's what I believe, because I'm the man in the arena. And we talked about coming out of that cave. I came out of that cave, and I'm winning again. But I will lose again, but I don't look at it as a loss. I look at it as a learning experience. I am the man in the arena. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who stumbles, or not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or whether do of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place should never be with those cold, timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. And I'm going to leave you on that because I'll tell you something. You never want to be in those cold seats who be the critic who throws stones. Go and be the man in the arena. I came out of this, out of the cave, because I came out for guys like him. I came out guys like Alex and Brick and my stuff and got people like you watching. Yeah, I failed. Yeah, I lost. But I was proud of what I did. Yeah, I was down and out. But I stood up and I faced life head on. And I, I realized that, hey, it's okay to lose. It's okay to have mental health. It's okay to not feel right. But you know what? It's even better to get out of the cave, stand up and say, this is me, world. I'm going to take the world on again. I'm going to win again. But I know that I will lose again. But that's okay. Because that's life. Thank you for taking this. Thank you for watching, and I want to thank you guys for standing behind me in these times of need. If you guys need anything, I'll always be here. Mental health is a real thing. It's shit house, but it's okay. I hope everyone listening to understands, don't isolate yourself. There's always, if you can take one thing out of my stories, I never gave up. Never give in and understand that life is worth living. Thank you, Alex, for, this, uh, for taking on this podcast, and I hope one of you can take hey. anything out of this. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's an honor for me to start this with you, to start this lifelong podcast conversation thing I'm doing right now. It's an honor to have you as the first person on here. I thought, Thank you. What, a, what a better person because you have not only been a pivotal role in my career as, as a health professional, but also as a person in my life. Thank you. And so no matter what happens, your legacy doesn't just live on with what you do. It lives on in people like me and every other member and person you touch. So thank you, brother. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. a terrible it. handshake, by the way. Thanks, man. I, I really do appreciate it. So thank you. And um, whew, I'm going to get that off my chest. Two and a half hours of absolute fire. So um, Therapy session is done. Thank you very much. And um, listen to everyone out there. Um, there are lines. Maybe you put the, the help line up. I would be putting the help before the start of the podcast, please. What is it? Do you know? Yeah, I'll, t- I'll find that because I just want to everyone know if they're in help just so they know before it even starts, you can find it. So thank you very much. And thank you. Man, I can't wait to watch this podcast grow. Thank you very much. Do we sign off? Do you sign off when you finish a conversation with people? Oh, fuck no. See ya. See ya. Fuck. Was that good? Was that good? Shit. Thanks, bruv. Hey, that was good.